calculating theoretical yield is one of the trickiest calculations that you encounter in GCSE chemistry. But one way the exam board can make it even harder for you is by giving you one of the reactants in excess and one of them as a limiting reactant and expecting you to work out before you start which one is which. If you're new to this topic, I've already made a tutorial video explaining a bit more about what a limiting reactant is and how to identify it in different situations, including with masses, with volumes and also with solutions. But in this video, we're going to quickly run through three sample calculations where we're given mass data and asked to work out the mass of the product being made. Before I do any calculations, I'm going to do a little bit of writing to make sure that I don't waste any time in the exam by working out the relative formula mass or the moles for a substance that I don't actually need to answer the question. So I've got 20 grams of propane, so I'm going to write 20 grams underneath the propane, and 70 grams of oxygen, so I'm going to write 70 grams under the oxygen. I'm trying to work out carbon dioxide, so I put a little question mark there, and then I'm going to cross out the water so that I don't, in the stress of the exam, end up wasting any time with water. Then my first real step is going to be to work out the relative formula mass of each substance. So for this, I need to add up the masses of the different atoms that are in each substance. So here I've got 3 times 12 because the mass of carbon is 12 and there are 3 atoms, and 8 times 1 because the relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and there are 8 atoms, and that gives me a total of 44 grams per mole. Then I can do my oxygen, which is slightly easier, so I'm just going to have 2 times 16 which is 32 grams per mole. And then finally, my carbon dioxide is going to be 1 times 12 and 2 times 16, because oxygen has a mass of 16. And that, again, is also 44 grams per mole by coincidence. <clears throat> Once I've worked out the relative formula masses, I can now use the formula mass is Mr. Mole, or rather mass is relative formula mass multiplied by the number of moles. And if I rearrange that, I can have mole is mass divided by MR. So for my propane, I had 20 grams. So I'm going to do 20 grams of propane divided by 44 grams per mole. And that gives me 0.45 moles. Next, I'm going to take my oxygen and we know that we've got 70 grams of oxygen. So we're going to do 70 grams divided by 32 grams per mole, which is going to give me um, 2.1875 and so on. I want to avoid rounding because um, often you can have errors introduced that way. So really, I want to round at the very, very end of this calculation. Now, looking at those two, you might immediately think that the oxygen is in excess because there's a lot more of it. But if I look at my coefficients at the start and there in front of the oxygen, I can see that I actually need five times more oxygen than propane, um, five times more moles, five times more molecules. So actually, what I need to decide is, is 0.45 um, a fifth of 2.1875 or is that not quite right so it doesn't really matter which way around you do it but I tend to just start on the left and work left to right so I know that if this is how many moles of propane I have then I'm going to need five times more moles of oxygen because that's what the coefficients are telling me so um, 0.45 well actually it was 0.4545 and so on wasn't it um, if I multiply that by five um, then I get um, 2.2727 moles of oxygen. So in order for this number of moles of um, propane to react, that is how many moles of oxygen I would need. And actually, as I can see, I've got slightly fewer moles than that. So this is going to be my limiting reactant and the propane is going to be the one in excess. Now, what that means is it doesn't matter that I've got 20 grams of propane because not all 20 of those grams are going to react. So instead, for working out the yield, for working out how much carbon dioxide I've got, I'm going to use this 2.1875 um, for my limiting reactant. So again, I need to go back to my coefficients and I need to say that, well, for every um, five moles of oxygen, I'm only going to need three moles of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to take the moles of my limiting reactant and I'm going to divide by five and multiply by three. 
And if I do that, I'm going to get 1.3125 moles of carbon dioxide. So that's how many moles of carbon dioxide I'm expecting. And now I can go back to that mass is Mr. Mole formula. And I can do the MR, which is 44, multiplied by the number of moles, which was that. And I'm going to get a final answer of 57.75 grams. And because in the, um, in the question they've given it to me to three significant figures, I'm going to round to three significant figures as well. For this next question, I don't have an additional product to confuse me, but I'm still going to go through that process of writing the masses underneath the correct species just so that I don't get confused about what I'm doing. And then I can get going with working out the relative formula mass for each one of these. So for the nitrogen, I'm going to have two lots of 14, which is 28. For the hydrogen, it's just going to be two lots of one, which is nice and straightforward. That's two. And then for the ammonia, I'm going to have one lot of 14 and three lots of one, which gives me a total of 17 grams per mole. Then I can use that rearranged version of my mass is Mr. Mole equation. So mass divided by MR. And so for nitrogen, that's going to be 20 divided by 28, which gives me 0.71428 something. Um, so I want to write out that whole calculator display probably. I don't want to be rounding at this early stage. And then for hydrogen, it's just going to be 4 divided by 2, which is nice and easy. That's 2 moles. And then again, I'm going to use these coefficients, including the imaginary one that we don't write there because chemists are lazy. And we're going to say, OK, here I need three times more hydrogen than nitrogen. So if all of these um, moles of nitrogen were going to react, I would multiply by three and I would expect to have um, 2.142857 and it kind of goes on. So obviously I don't have that number of moles of hydrogen. I've only got two. So this is going to be my limiting reactant. And my nitrogen is the one that's going to be in excess. So it doesn't matter that I've got 0.71428 moles because not all of those moles are going to react. So instead, for my next part of the calculation, I'm going to use my moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to go back to these coefficients and I've got my three there in front of my hydrogen and my two there in front of my ammonia. So I'm going to take my moles of hydrogen and what I'm going to do is divide by three. So I'm dividing by the moles of the thing that I'm starting with. And then I'm going to times by two. So I'm multiplying by the moles of the thing that I've um, that I'm working out. So it's dividing by the three that comes from there and then multiplying by the two that is there. Um, and this is nice, easy maths um, because I'm starting from the point of view of two. So I'm going to end up with four thirds of a mole of, um, of ammonia or 1.3 recurring. So therefore, my mass of ammonia, we're going back to that mass is Mr. Mole equation. So that's going to be 17 multiplied by 1.3 recurring, which is going to give me 22 point six 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 lots of sixes um, and again because in the question um, we've gone to um, one decimal place that's what I'm going to do as well so I'm going to leave it as 22.7 grams so again for this question I'm going to start out by writing my masses in the relevant places so 13.5 grams of aluminium and 21.3 grams of fluorine and I'm trying to work out aluminium fluoride and then I can work out all of my um, relative masses. Now of course for aluminium it's actually going to be AR rather than MR, the relative atomic mass, because um, we're talking about a metal and it's not forming molecules. And then the relative formula mass for fluorine is going to be two lots of 19 which is 38 and my relative formula mass of aluminium fluoride is going to be one lot of 27 and three lots of 19, which is going to be 84 grams per mole. So now I can start working out my moles. So as we had before, this is going to be mass divided by, well, here it's going to be AR. So 13.5 divided by 27 is going to be 
moles. And I should probably annotate that this is of aluminium. So my examiner knows what I'm doing. And then my moles of um, fluorine are going to be 21.3 divided by 38. And that's going to give me 0.56 moles. And then working from left to right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, if all of those 0.5 moles um, of aluminium reacted, well, I would divide by two and multiply by three to find out how many moles of fluorine that would be. And that would be 0.75. But I don't actually have 0.75 moles. I only have 0.56. So this is going to be my limiting reactant. This is going to be my excess. So I'm not going to use up all of the aluminium, but I am going to use up all of the fluorine. So then I'm going to go back to my coefficients to find out how many moles of my product I have. So my aluminium fluoride. And so um, here we're going to divide by three and times by two. And that is going to give me um, 0.37368 moles. So again, I'm going to leave until right at the end of the calculation to do my rounding. Um, and then I can work out that my mass is going to be 84 times that number, which is going to give me a mass of 31.4 grams. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope that you're now feeling a bit more confident with this type of calculation. If you did find this video useful, then let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon.